I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for the uh, webinar entitled Automated Optimization Workflow for a Diesel Piston Bowl Using Cases in Converge CFD. Um, this webinar is co-hosted with our uh, one of our technical partners, Friendship Systems, and I do want to take care of a little housekeeping um, just to mention if there, if you want to know some of the other events that we're hosting or conferences that we're attending, I do invite you to visit our website. Um, it's convergecfd.com, uh, and as well, um, we also list uh, additional webinars and other things that we are doing with our partners. If you have any questions, we encourage you to type them in the question box on the side. I don't believe we'll have time for questions today, um, but Sarong or Mattia will follow up with you uh, individually at the conclusion of the webinar. We will also be providing a recording of today's webinar. Um, just give us a few days and that will go to the email address that you use to register for the webinar. And with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and pass the control over to Sarong. Thank you for joining us. All right. Uh, thank you, Tiffany. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you all so much for taking the time to attend this webinar. Uh, my name is Sarang, and I'm a senior research engineer at Convergent Science. I will be presenting along with Mattia, the head of Sales Europe at Friendship Systems. Hello. In, in this webinar, we will be talking about the recent work that we did with Friendship Systems on establishing a process to perform automated piston bowl optimization. So today, I'll first be talking about automated design optimization, the process, and the challenges that are associated with doing something like it. Once I do that, Mattia will be talking about cases, and I will be talking about Convert CFD. After that, we will look at the workflow that we have established, and then take a look at some take a look at some results. So what is automated design optimization? In, this, in the context of IC engine simulations, it is a process that would allow the analysis engineer to optimize piston bowl shapes based on a set of objectives. Here, the engineer has to just worry about setting up the design variables and then process the final results from the CFD simulations. Everything in between, the mesh creation process, the like the model setup, everything in between would be taken care by the ADO framework if established correctly. It doesn't just stop there. The entire design optimization process should be portable, meaning when there is a new problem, the same process should be applied without relying upon mesh templates or mesh creating scripts. So for this problem, the piston bowl optimization problem, what are some of the challenges that we need to be aware of? Firstly, a robust parametric CAD model has to be created, and this is where we rely upon cases. Secondly, a valid mesh needs to be created for each valid design that gets generated. And this is, this is where we rely upon the automatic mesh generation capabilities of Converge. Also, in this problem, when we change the piston bowl shape, the combustion chamber volume is going to change. To make sure that the optimization study is valid, we need to make sure that the compression ratio is held constant. That being said, I would like to pass, I would like to pass the ball to Mattia, who will introduce cases and its capabilities. Over to you, Mattia. So, um, yeah, let me start off by giving a short introduction about uh, the company I work for for the people that don't know us yet. So um, our goal here at Friendship Systems is to partner up with our uh, customers to solve any kind of problems that they might encounter in their simulation-driven design process of their products. Here uh, we have more than 15 years of experience, especially in the fields of geometry parametrization or more specifically of parametrization of complex geometries, freeform geometries and their optimization. We originally started working in the maritime industry and since a few years we also started uh, transitioning into other applications like turbo machinery and powertrain and so on. 
The company is located in Potsdam, not quite in that beautiful castle that you see at the side there, but close by. And we mainly have one software product, which is the uh, CAE platform cases. So let's take a closer look at what we do in terms of our software. As I mentioned, our software is called Cases, and it's mainly composed of two, um, let's say, components or uh, modules. And the first one is the optimization part. So here we take care of everything that is needed to control the optimization process. So we provide uh, several algorithms built into our software. We also have an interface to the Dakota optimization toolkit, which we will hear more about later on. Um, we also have to manage the data that's being created during the optimization process and finally assess all this data. So that all belongs to the control of the optimization process. And the second component uh, is the CAD module of our software, which is probably the most important part and what is, let's say, the most unique part of our software. And here we specialize on creating a simulation-ready model. So it means a geometry model that can be used right away by the grid generation and the, of the CFD solver. Um, we're also focused on, on a robust and easy uh, geometry variation. So if you have a complex geometry, um, it's you're able to, to change it in an efficient way. Uh, and also, this is the last point, with uh, as low number of parameters as possible, because the more parameters you have, the more time you will need during the optimization process. So these are the two internal components of our software. And then to close up the process loop, we have a generic interface where we couple to external simulation software in this case, uh, Converge CFD. One point that is very important here, since we're automating the whole process and automatically generating geometry variants, we need to have a robust method of meshing so that all these geometry variants can be uh, meshed. And this is something that Converge CFD is very good at, good at. And Sarang will tell a bit more about this later on. In the field of powertrain, uh, cases is used in all kinds of different applications that deal with uh, flow, let's say, in, the, in general terms. Uh, one field of application are in-cylinder geometries, which is what we will look at in today's webinar, but also all types of uh, parts of the air uh, induction system and the exhaust system, like ports, manifolds, ductings, and so on as well as rotating geometries like the torque converter you see in this picture or turbocharger impellers, volutes for turbocharger is also a popular application. So you see these are all pretty complex geometries, free-formed surface uh, geometries. And um, also you heard initially that our most unique part in cases is the uh, CAT module. So you might ask yourself if you have a CAD tool probably in-house already. Why would I need another CAD system? And uh, typically what happens is when someone is trying to set up a design exploration or optimization process is that the uh, typical bottlenecks and problems uh, happen in the handling of the geometry and the varying of the geometry. So with these traditional CAD systems, uh, varying such complex geometries is often very difficult and uh, combined with a high failure rate. Also, it is um, difficult to consider or even automatically fulfill specific constraints, which is an important point here, as Sarang mentioned, for the uh, compression ratio. Another point is that the simulation engineers who run uh, these CFD computations typically depend on the CAD department to provide the geometry and, and also geometry variants, and that the quality of these uh, CAD models is not necessarily suitable for simulation. So as I mentioned before, these are all things that we specialize on with cases. So these are bottlenecks that are not encountered when using cases. So that's why we claim it makes sense to add an additional tool, even if you're working with a traditional CAD system already. Additionally, 
Additionally, to these uh, geometry-related points, uh, of course, cases also gives you control over the whole process, optimization, or a design exploration process from one integrated user interface. So uh, as a next point, how can you make use of cases? There is ba basically two different methods. The first one is as a user. So here uh, you wouldn't build your own models, but you would use pre-configured models and setups inside of cases. There is uh, no training necessary because everything is already prepared. And these models that you will be using are either generic models that are provided by us or custom made models made to your specifications that uh, we made for you or maybe an internal cases expert in your company prepared for other users in the company. These models can be used in the native GUI of cases or in the web interface that can be used to access project, project files in cases. The other uh, method of using cases is as a developer. So this is, so to say, the opposite of the user. Uh, a developer would typically create uh, models by himself and, and project setups either to, to use them himself or for other users in the company. Of course, this needs training to know how, how the software works and how these models can be set up. And the, this developer, so to say, can either offer his services as a consul consultancy externally to other companies, or he can support the internal users by preparing models for them. One further thing that I already briefly mentioned is uh, this web GUI. So cases can also be used in the browser uh, by creating some customized project setups that can be used sort of like an app. And the idea is here that you have a very limited but also very easy use of uh, the setups that you have in cases. So it doesn't need uh, an expertise in cases. Um, as I mentioned already, these models can be set up by, by us, but also by in-house cases experts. And you can wrap a lot of procedures here, like uploading data, downloading data, um, starting CFD computations, starting optimization processes, uh, uh, and so on. And what happens in the background is that cases is running on a server, either on site in the company or remotely, for example, here on our server. And uh, you basically connect to this cases uh, instance through your browser. An additional advantage, of course, is that you can use it on any type of uh, device. So it's a responsive interface. You can use it on a PC, but also on a tablet and mobile phone and so on. And uh, why am I mentioning all of this? Uh, this is because we have prepared a model of a piston bowl for you. So if you would like to play around after this webinar, um, you can find this web application on our website and uh, play around with the parameters in the model. And you can also export the geometry and download it on your uh, computer. And the address to find this is bit.li slash pistonbowl. Again, bit.ly slash pistonbowl. And here you will find this application. So that's it as an introduction uh, about what we do at Friendship Systems and about cases. And now I'm giving back to Sarang uh, to talk a bit more about uh, Converge CFD. So now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Converge CFD software. For those of you who are not much familiar with Converge, it is a general purpose CFD package, which is extremely suited to solve challenging and hard problems that involve complex and moving geometry. Now, this applies to both reacting and non-reacting systems. The primary benefit of Converge is that there is absolutely no user mission. This makes simulating complex fluid systems an easy task, and the adaptive mesh refinement feature helps in running simulations in a very computationally efficient manner by refining the computational domain based on the local flow conditions. And hence, when it comes to Convert CFD's workflow, the only requirement is a clean geometry that needs to be supplied in, in, our, in our own native format, which we call as uh, the surface.dat file format. 
And once you have this file, then you can set up the case and run the simulations without worrying about the meshing part. All right. So now that I've introduced Converge and that Marty has introduced, us, introduced cases, I'm going to talk about the piston bowl optimization study. Here, the primary objective is to come up with a proof of concept that demonstrates the entire workflow. And the first step is to identify the geometric parameters that are to be considered for the optimization study. Once we have identified the parameters, what we are going to do is we prepare the baseline CFD setup, which is going to be used for each and every design iteration. Then we run the simulations and gather important outputs that are fed back to the optimizer. The optimizer then changes the geometric parameters, creates a new geometry, and then we repeat the entire process. Now, I'm going to pass the ball to Matia one more time, and he will be providing the details of the parametric piston bowl model. Over to you, Matia. All right, thanks. So let's take a look uh, at how this model is set up. Um, so uh, we, for this, Test case, we have used a rather simple uh, example of a piston bowl model. So we have a profile of the piston bowl, which is composed of uh, two radii, which you see here in the sections between these rays that come from the center. Um, and then we have uh, two spline segments um, and several line segments that make up this complete profile. Uh, to control this profile, uh, we can control the values of the radii, of course, the uh, positions of the con spline control points, and also we can scale the profile, parts of the profile rather, in different coordinate directions. And of course, to create the, uh, let's say, the surface of the piston ball, we just take this profile and revolve it around the central axis to get a, a surface of revolution. So rather a straightforward, easy model. Um, the variables that we have uh, selected for the optimization uh, are the what we call the lip entrainment is the first uh, variable. This controls the size uh, of the lip as is highlighted here in the animation. And at the same time, this is basically the inner bowl diameter that is delimited by the tip uh, of the lip. The second variable is the, the bowl radius. So the, uh, the radius of the bottom of the bowl. And uh, the third parameter is the uh, inner diameter. This controls basically the uh, more or less the overall bowl diameter by scaling the profile in, in the uh, sideways direction. And then as a uh, fourth design variable, we have the uh, a variable that controls the direction of the fuel spray or the spray angle. And this is uh, a note here, this is not a parameter of the geometry model itself, but this is simply a value that goes into the converge CFD control files. So this is an example that during the optimization, you can control also parameters that are not related to the, to the geometry, to the shape of the geometry itself, but, uh, but also, uh, other things uh, pertaining to the, let's say, injection or EGR amount, things like that, things that go into the CFD setup. If you've uh, seen these uh, animations before, you might may have noted that we, I, I showed the uh, variation of the parameters, but the, obviously the, uh, the volume of the piston ball was changing, so the compression ratio was not fixed. And of course, we would like to keep this compression ratio fixed at the prescribed value. So what we're doing here is using an internal optimization loop that um, whenever we change uh, the geometry parameter, adjusts the compression ratio uh, to the correct value. And um, we do this by, by taking secondary shape parameters, so not the ones that are using in the actual geometry variation, and basically trying to counteract uh, the changes in volume um, 
and controlling this in an optimization process. So we see some examples here on the side. The design variable that is being changed is this uh, lip entrainment that we've seen before. And here in the in the three pictures, we see different ways of counteracting the, the change in volume. So in the first one, we're adapting the depth of the bowl. In uh, the second one, we're changing the profile of the bowl. bowl. And in the third one, we're changing here this outer diameter of the bowl. All, all of these uh, have the same effects. So in all of these animations, we always have this exact same compression ratio. And you can also combine uh, several of these ways at the same time. So if, for example, you would like to you know, adjust uh, the, the volume with the outer diameter first until you reach a certain limit, and then you would like to use another parameter to make some more adjustment. If the compression ratio is not yet fixed, you can also define an order of preference. So basically, uh, this is a very customizable process uh, of how the model makes sure that the com uh, CR or compression ratio is keep kept fixed. When we have the model ready, uh, we, of course, we want to export the geometry for grid generation into Converge CFD. So the final geometry can be exported in different kinds of generic uh, CAD format, formats like IGES, STEP, uh, STL. And in this case, specifically, we are exporting the geometry as a sector, which is cut out of the geometry according to the number of nozzles that we have specified for the injection. And the geometry is then exported in a special format for converged CFD. So this surface dot that that uh, Sarang mentioned already. And additionally, we also include individual IDs for the identification of the different geometry patches. So for example, the cylinder head, the, the bowl, uh, the, the periodic surfaces, and so on. So that's it for the uh, model setup and now back to Sarang that will explain the rest of the optimization workflow. All right, uh, thank you, Mattia. So uh, let me continue with the CFD model setup. In terms of the baseline CFD model, uh, we are taking a really simple case. We'll be performing a closed cycle simulation where we consider a single sector of the domain for computational efficiency. Uh, we use uh, simplified combustion and emission models along with adaptive mesh refinement to create a computational model that can be simulated in a short amount of time. Uh, because for this particular study, we, run, uh, we ran around 40 simulations and we want a, a quick turnaround time. Okay, so once the parametric CAD model has been created and once the baseline CFD files are ready, we can add them inside the software connector framework of cases. The software connector establishes the connection between cases and converge through control scripts. And we'll be taking a, taking a look at those scripts shortly. As you can see, the software connector contains four quadrants. And uh, I'm going to be explaining what goes inside each one of them. First, we add the parametric CAD model that we generated and we add that in a format that is compatible with converge, converge which is the surface.dat format. Uh, and the reason for doing that is this actually helps us in keeping this entire process 100% automated. In the next quadrant, we add the input files from our baseline CFD model. Here is where we add our main script file, which controls how the simulations are run and processed. In the next quadrant, we add the output files from Converge that contains the variables that are being used by the optimization engine. For this study, we will be performing a multi-objective optimization using an open source optimization toolkit called Dakota. Cases actually provides a nice interface to this engine in its graphical user interface. Uh, in the final quadrant, we add the output files that contain the 3D information. Uh, this is used to do this is used to do automated post-processing, 
But for this project, what we decided to do is we decided to automate the post processing part uh, through scripting as well because that gives us more flexibility. And that is what I'm going to be talking about next. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the control script, which I referred to earlier. In this case, the script is written in Python. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over the contents of the script to give you an idea of the operations that are being carried over. The script is responsible for many things like running the job, converting the 3D data into insight format, and also running insight in batch mode. So the first thing we need to do is set up the paths to all the important locations inside the simulation folder. And we, do, we are doing this by specifying all this information as a dictionary within Python. Once this is done, we submit a sbatch job that runs the simulations in our cluster. This is where we provide information such as number of cores and the memory requirements. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to wait till the simulation ends successfully. And once that happens, we convert the converge post files into a format that Insight can read. And finally, what we do is we launch Insight in batch mode to do some automated post processing. So for those who are interested uh, in learning about automated, automated post processing, uh, let me know if you have any questions. But in order for us to do this, we have to make use of insight command files that have to be created beforehand. Okay, all right. So that being said, now let me uh, summarize uh, our, our, the runs that we had to perform for this particular study. In total, we ran around, uh, we ran over 40 simulations. And as I said before, we ran a multi-objective optimization run. Our objective variables are NOx and SOOT emissions and we wanted to minimize them. Now, since we have two variables, we will end up with a Pareto front. The plots that you are looking at here are generated from cases interface. So in the main plot, on the x-axis, you see the NOx, and y-axis, you see the suit. Now, I would like all of you to pay attention to the smaller plot on the top right corner. It is basically the same plot However, here, the designs that form the Pareto front are highlighted in blue color. Once the design engineer has access to the Pareto front designs, they can further refine the search space by running a second optimization run, or they could choose one of the designs in the Pareto front based upon a different output variable, such as uh, another uh, uh, emission, such as hydrocarbon emissions or any other performance related parameter. The workflow we have established allows us to do this. Uh, we did not go about uh, refining the search space further because like I said earlier, our objective behind the study is to establish a process and not to do a really detailed study. So here on the right hand side, on the bottom right corner, you, we actually show you an animation of the design, different designs that get generated during uh, this process. We make sure that the compression ratio does not change from design to design. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Now let's take a look at uh, some click plane images. What I actually did is from the previous plot, uh, I've actually picked up three design points from the Pareto front, uh, design 12, 28, and 30. And uh, I'm basically creating a clip plane and I'm showing the temporary, uh, I'm showing the knocks. So here you can see that the design on the right hand side has the lowest knocks and design on the left hand side design number 12 as a lower suit. Now you can observe the classic knock suit trade off by coloring the clip planes with suit this time. The design with the lowest knocks has the highest suit and vice versa. Now when the bowel shapes are getting changed, essentially the spray uh, liquid and vapor penetration are getting altered. With cases, it is possible to include the spray orientation angle and bunch of uh, as Matthias said, and a bunch of other parameters in the optimization study as well. You can even think about modifying things like rate shape uh, and uh, other injection parameters. In this image, you see uh, the sprays five degrees after the start of injection. It is possible to make a movie of the spray uh, for each of these designs so that you can compare the mixing process as well. 
Another important thing to look at is uh, the parameter dependence plots. Here, you see which variables play a major role in uh, affecting your primary objectives. Uh, this plot can help you understand the designs more clearly. In this case, you can see that the scale x inner diameter, uh, which is right here, plays an important role in affecting both the NOx and suit emissions. Here we both uh, here we show uh, both the linear and quadratic regression curves, uh, which actually helps you visualize the dependence quite easily. So how did we do from the baseline design? So again, the baseline case is a made up case, and we don't have any experimental data. So for the base from from the baseline case, we were able to make you know six percent improvements in NOx and seven percent improvements in soot. When I say improvement, I'm I'm saying uh, I'm talking about lower emissions. Now, design 28 and 36, you know, since they are on the Pareto front, what they're, what you can clearly see that they are meeting uh, one emission requirement NOx, but not the other. So the, the next step in this process would be to actually run a second set of optimization where you refine the search space around design number 12 to see if there is another optimal design. On the right-hand side, you can see a small movie that compares uh, the baseline designs against uh, one of the uh, one of the optimized designs. So here, gray is the old design, and the blue-colored piston bowl is actually the uh, optimized design. Uh, the major changes occur in the bowl radius and also lip entrainment, and as we saw in the parameter dependence plot, the scale x inner diameter parameter was found to be uh, an important parameter in optimizing the designs. Okay, all right. So to conclude, you know, we work with friendship systems uh, to develop a framework that helps us perform automated design optimization of a diesel engine piston bowl. Uh, with respect to future work, we would like to validate our approach by applying this to engine models that have experimental data. Now, as Tiffany mentioned, uh, what we will be doing is we'll be getting back to you on an individual basis to answer any questions that you, that you might have. Uh, finally, uh, cases has a new promotion that they have going on, and I will let Matia explain the details. Right, as Rang mentioned, I just wanted to announce this promotion that we currently have, or we just uh, started specifically for powertrain applications. So, if you would like to get a first taste, so to say, of cases, uh, then you can. Uh, check out this uh, sp uh, special powertrain promotion on the website bit.li slash powertrain special. So bit.ly slash powertrain special uh, that will explain uh, what, what uh, we offer there. Basically, um, we it includes a, let's say, customized model according to your specifications for a certain geometry that you would like to work on. And then we give you some training and help you to connect uh, to CFD as well as giving you a temporary license of cases for uh, working with that geometry. And additionally, if you use the promotional code PISTONBALL uh, related to this webinar, then you will get 20% off on that offer that you see there on the page. So I'll be happy to hear from any one of you. All right, uh, thanks, Matia. And Tiffany, uh, that's all I had as well. Thank you for joining us. And again, visit our website for any upcoming webinars as well. Thank you.